Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and this is a duck. Now, basically, what these are is they were built on a, originally anyway, they were built on a 6x6 GMC platform, and it's very interesting because you've got a vehicle that can do 50 miles an hour on the road, but can do also six and a half miles an hour on the water. Now, I'm sure some versions could go either faster or slower, but that's just kind of a general average of what these vehicles were able to do. Now, this particular one has been brought back, back to life by CCM, and I am here to test it out and see what it can do, and also see how useful it would be for map exploration, considering the fact that you have amphibious capability. Now, as far as the interior goes, you do actually have a working steering wheel, albeit a little offset from the center, but I feel like that's pretty, uh, that, that's actually pretty accurate as to what these things looked like they used to be. Now, once we fire this thing up, we're obviously going to take it into the garage and see it, what it has to offer customization-wise, but then I decided that that is why we would bring it to the winter testing grounds as opposed to the summer testing grounds because there's a river in the back that we can use for some really interesting testing of this thing in the water so let's fire it up and see what it's all about in the garage and then also see what it's all about on the water now i believe the original ones had about 94 horsepower and that's not much at all considering especially how big it is and how many wheels it had to drive so this version may have a little bit more than that uh but once again, it might need a little bit more power to actually get itself up and going in SnowRunner. So, in this, it actually has a 5.3 liter V8. We have one gearbox option, we have one suspension option, and let's do, uh, let's do the winch. Spare wheel, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead, why not? Flatbed, canvas top. So, the flatbed, I assume, actually, yeah, so two additional slots for cargo, that's actually quite nice. And, wait a minute. Ah! You could maintenance frame this thing if you really wanted to. I'm not going to, but at the same time, I think that that's really freaking cool. You could do spare parts in the back, which is really nice to have. And then fuel cans, where are they? Like, where do they go? Oh, on the back. And then you could also do more fuel in fuel drums if you so choose. Now, unfortunately, you cannot put beans on the dash, which is moderately disappointing. But that's all good because now... It's time to take this thing into the water and see what it's all about. So let's fire up the duck and wait a second. Before we before we do that, I completely missed my wheel and tire options. Do we have a like an ice and snow compound of any kind? Also, the handling is a bit strange, but then again, in order for it to be amphibious, I'm sure he had to do all sorts of weird funky things to the suspension. So let's see. Oh, wow. Actually, you only get one, like, one wheel and tire option. And that's the one that comes with it. You also only get one wheel. Yeah, that's, that's really the only option you get. I just wanted to make sure and go back and check. So, before we, well, actually, no. We'll save the other tests for later. You guys want to see this thing in the water just as much as I do. Let's see what it does. Not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous, but three, two, one, let's go. I just wanted to make sure it didn't have a active suspension option that I needed to hit. Well, I mean, it's already off to a pretty dang good start. I believe the water is deeper over here. Let's make sure it's not, like, driving on the base of the water. This is already doing really, really, really well. And I'm impressed by it. Now, like, I know we're driving with the current at the moment. But it's still dang impressive. It's still really impressive, considering the fact that it's, like, so incredibly usable and maneuverable still here on the water. Mad props. Mad props. And actually, let, let's see. Let's see if it's actually touching the ground. It is touching the ground. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I feel like there are worse ways to, to test it out, though, because even here, like... Even here, it's doing a really good job. Does the water ever get deeper, or is this just, like, the depth that it stays? I think this is the depth that it stays. Well, I mean, you know, for an initial test, it's not bad. But I think for an even better test, we have to go to the summer testing grounds and test it out in the lake there. So that is going to be our next stop 
in this thing's adventure. So after starting this test at the Winter Proving Grounds, I think we quickly discovered that it wasn't really going to give us the depth, no pun intended, of testing that we needed in order to fully explore the limits of this duck. So we're going to go ahead and head right out here and see what it does in some actual properly deep water. So it says dangerous water level. I'm not going to worry about it. And we're just going to head... Um, Head right out into it and see what it can do. So the wheels are on the ground now, but I definitely don't think they're on the ground anymore. Yeah, we're, uh, ooh, we floating now, boys. Does this feel like six and a half miles an hour? Honestly, yeah, it kind of does. I mean, six and a half miles an hour is not very fast, but you can clearly see that underneath there now, the wheels are not touching anything. And we're just driving along. And what's so crazy about this is that you don't need to install some sort of crazy suspension or crazy gearbox or engine to do this. It just does it right out of the box. And this could be a genuine game changer for map exploration. And the crazy part is, it's not even that it's unrealistic because these vehicles existed. These vehicles worked. These vehicles were something that actually literally did what we're doing right now. Drove along the road, both paved and dirt, and then drove right into the water and kept on going. We're literally doing what this vehicle was made to do right now, and it does it here with flying colors. This is honestly one of the best representations of an amphibious vehicle that I've seen in SnowRunner in a really long time, and I think it does what it's supposed to do in a really, really, like, really good way because it's so usable. It's so usable, it's so simple, and honestly, it's very easy. It's very, very, very easy to use. Now, once we get to the other side of this miniature lake, we're going to see how it does in some mud, obviously. Uh, but I'm just blown away and absolutely so impressed with the way this thing works, both on land and on water. And once again, you... you don't have to do anything you don't have to touch any kind of like crazy option or uh, adjust any like you know suspension mode to get it to do this it just does it you just drive it right into the water and off you go there is nothing better than having a vehicle that is so incredibly straightforward in terms of doing what it does it's just so incredibly driver friendly really so the wheels have now made contact with the ground and off we go and it's pretty quick on land, too, because it's a freaking eight-speed. Now, in the mud, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not, you know, it's not a mud truck, but it'll get you through. Yeah, it'll get you through. Look at that. Once again, maybe not the, maybe not the fastest thing in the world, but I will say it's interesting. First gear is equal to low plus, it seems, or at least that's kind of how it feels like it's driving. Let's see. Second mud lane now. Wow! Blows right through that. That means the first mud lane is going to be a walk in the park. Holy smokes, bro. This thing is... This thing is really, really good. I gotta admit, this thing is really, really, really good. Let's try the really deep stuff now. So it sinks immediately, but... Whoa! I don't know how it's that fast. Well... Oh, you know what it's doing? It's really weird. It's finding the water and it's speeding up. Like, when it comes in contact with water, it speeds up. I don't know what kind of wacky programming he did to this thing's XML to get it to do that. But, regardless, it's weird, but it somehow just works. It somehow just works. And I, for one, could not be happier with how this thing actually turned out. I, I, I love... The crazy, as you guys know, I love the crazy classic projects that have been coming out of the CCM shop lately, and this is no exception. And as a matter of fact, it could be one of my favorite CCM uh, mods slash restorations uh, to this day. It's really well done, really fun to drive, and really engaging. And it also gives you a new angle, a new perspective from which to enjoy the game. And I think any mod that does that is definitely worth checking out in my book. And the cool thing is, I can totally see this being console friendly as well. So let's see how it does when I take it completely out of its element and throw it at some rocks. Ow, 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 ow. All right, go, 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 go. 
The long overhangs are definitely going to hurt its rock capability, but I gotta say, the sheer power of the thing and its ability to climb is pretty good. I mean, it's better than I thought it would be, that's for sure. And this custom tire set has mad grip, mad grip. I wonder how it does when you actually legit, like, yeet it off of something. Well, kind of a yeet. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Yo, you can see the propeller, though. That's actually really cool that you can see, like, the underside and the propeller and everything. Oh, crap. I forgot to install the winch, which means I'm going to have to do it now. And then now I should be able to rescue myself. Hey. Oh, freaking quick winch literally goes to the weakest possible location there we go it's good at rolling over though yeah it's great at rolling over although we broke everything but you know i mean in a test like this you're, you're sometimes gonna break things and that's just kind of how it goes that is just kind of how it goes it's very susceptible to engine damage though i do I, I do have to say it's very susceptible to um like phantom damage from small rocks and small trees so if you are driving it in a campaign scenario you will have to be careful of those things for sure now the dips obstacle is going to be very weird with this thing because the dips obstacle is going to either hang it up or hang it up a little bit later on into the test one way or another it's going to hang it up but whether or not it gets fully high centered is still an unknown to me at this point, but let's see how she does. Come on. You know what's actually really funny is that the wheelbase, the wheelbase does pretty well, and I'm surprised that like it's not getting all that much engine damage by doing this. That's tremendously and oh well, there's the engine damage. Tremendously impressive, yet also hilarious. Look at that. Look at that. I cannot believe that it's just bumbling along through the dips obstacle that well. That is freaking great. That is hilarious. Now, for our final test, you guys already know it's getting a full repair. And now, it heads for the bridge jump. The only thing about heading for the bridge jump in this thing is the fact that, well, we're attempting to put a amphibious vehicle in the air, which... Amphibious vehicles and air don't always get along. Um, once again, typical quick winch going to the weakest possible winch points. I mean, once again, I don't know if they do that to be realistic or not, but it's not all that realistic because in the real world, you wouldn't connect a winch to those to those tiny little saplings. At least I wouldn't connect a winch to a tiny sapling, but that's just me. All right, let's go ahead and make our way on up the hill. What's funny is... Eighth gear, I mean, it's quick, but it's not that quick. I think he needed all these ratios to make it work in the water. All right, making our way up the hill, getting ready to make this quick left. Now, granted, I know how I said there's, like, no beans on the dash, but there's also not much of a dash for beans to sit on. Now that I actually look at it a little bit closer and think about it. Well, here we go, boys. Eighth gear, down the bridge jump. Oh, boy. Putting it neutral should speed up a little bit. Yep, there goes gravity. Taking her. Come on. Yeet. Whoa. So it's rear heavy. That's very interesting. It's rear heavy, and so it leans back off of the jump. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this test, and if you did, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.